Welcome back to another episode of Collector's Corner with Corey Smith. That's me! I'm Corey Smith! And welcome to my show! Welcome to the Thunderdome! Yes, thank you for stopping by again for another episode of Collector's Corner with Corey Smith. We are here for episode 10! Dang! Double digits, baby! Double digits. Uh, so yeah, if you've not checked out episodes one through nine, please do so at your leisure here on the Murfreesboro Media YouTube page. And as always, please like and subscribe if you did what you see. Anyway, enough of that plug bullshit. We got collection pieces to talk about. I mean, it is called Collector's Corner with Corey Smith after all. Dang, so here we go. Today's episode, episode 10, we're going to be talking about the Xbox 360. Woo, there's some good games on that 360 day, I'll tell you what. We're going to be closing out video games here. We've done the uh, video game train here on the Murfreesboro Media. Whoop, whoop. So, uh, I don't have anything past the 360. That is it. The 360 is where I have stopped in my video game consoling collection. With that said, we're gonna move on to my top five Xbox 360 games. So yeah, top five, like always. We're gonna be starting at number five, working our way to my favorite Xbox 360 game. Let's get into it. Let's see what we got. Number five, number five, here we go. Oh, dang, Sherlock Holmes versus Jack. The Ripper. Sort of like an old school PC game. Point and click. Uh, picking up clues. Searching for uh, for answers. Uh, you got Jack the Ripper. And killing. Gutting. Slaughtering some, uh, some prostitutes and ladies of the night. But you got Sherlock Holmes and uh, Dr. Watson rolling up out of Baker Street going, all right, we're going to take this case on and we're going to see what happens. Burns. I'm a big fan of the old school point and click, the old school PC style games, the Sierra uh, brand games like the King's Quest, uh, Police Quest, all that stuff. Uh, this one right here is made by Adventure Company. Great company for these sort of games. You know, they do a lot of the little point and click, the mystery solving, the mystery kind of games. Slow, methodical. That's what I like about these games. You know, I, I play plenty of fast paced action games, but there's just something about you know, walking in a room and you got to like look at every little uh, corner and under the books and in the drawer and behind the the uh, the mirror or whatever, you know. And so you and you're piecing together little bits of clues. You're going behind the crime scene. You're like, oh, look, the cops missed something. Here's a whatever. Here's something that fell in the gutter. Let me pull that out. And then you start piecing all that together. Work your way through the storyline. And then uh, hopefully you'll be uh, the hero and hopefully you'll solve the mystery and you'll stop Jack the Ripper. So who knows? What's How good are you? Are you a Sherlock Holmes aficionado? Can you beat the Ripper? <laughs> so anyway, point and click, slow methodical, mystery solving, uh, kind of reading journal entries, talking to people, a lot of conversating to be done, all of that stuff. Number five, Moving on to number four. We got number four. We're on to number four. It is Medal of Honor Airborne. Now, let me tell you about the Xbox 360. Dang, there's a lot of war games on here. I mean, you got all the Call of Duties. You got the Medal of Honors. You got just a plethora of World War II, uh, modern warfare, uh, just this, that, and the other, if you like war games, and I've played a bunch of them, I've owned a bunch of them, and I still own some more off camera. Big war fan. I mean, I like shooting stuff. I like killing Nazis. Oh, so this is right here. World War II, you are airborne. You are a part of the 101st Airborne. And so with this game, you jump out and you fly. And then you just come over, and then as, every time you die, because you're going to die a lot, at least I am. I mean, I'm, you know, we've talked about this before. I'm mediocre at best when it comes to video games. Yeah, you get up in here, and then you just fly in on your parachute, and you can be like, like, oh, I don't want to land over here. There's a bunch of enemies down here shooting at me. Like, oh, let me circle around and land over here. So that kind of is a, a kind of a neat concept right there. So every time you load into a, 
a fresh world, or if you've been killed and you reload, respawn, then uh, yeah, you just parachute and then you find your way to the right spot where your uh, where your backup is or where your your platoon or your squad is, and then you guys get together and boom, you charge in, and then it turns into like any other sort of Medal of Honor. Call of Duty, first person, just pop, 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 except, you know, World War II, so you got your, get your Thompsons, you got your, uh, your carbines, all that good stuff, uh, old-time grenades, uh, whoop, whoop, you know, you're flowing, throwing grenades everywhere, uh, and so, yeah, you know, you got all the good stuff, you know, Nazis to kill, all the bad guys to slaughter with reckless abandon, right here, baby, airborne, so if you're not checked out airborne, then you need to give it a all right, folks, we got two down, and now we're moving on to number three, middle of the park. So now we got a little psychological horror thriller. Uh, what do they say? A, a psychological action thriller. Yeah. Alan Wake. Fucking badass storyline in this game. Dang. I mean, this is like a reading a book or watching a movie. Uh, you got in-depth storyline, mystery, in darkness, fight with light. Oh my goodness. When the wife of best-selling writer Alan Wake, oh, the title, disappears on their vacation, his search turns up pages from a thriller he doesn't even remember writing. Oh my God, you wrote a thriller in your blackout state and now your wife's missing? Jesus, what's happening? A dark presence stalks the small town of Bright Falls, pushing weight to the brink of sanity in his fight to unravel the mystery and save the woman he loves. So, yeah, third person. You wake up and you're like, I don't know what's going on. My car crashed. My wife's gone. Uh, I'm finding pages of uh, some book that clearly I wrote because it sounds just like me. It's got my name on it. Dang. So he's got to walk through this town, checking out shit. Getting into uh, crazy monster fights. Uh, the whole thing is like, yeah, you got to have your flashlight with you. You got to have your torch with you. Because uh, when you're out stalking around at night, looking for clues, trying to find your wife. Oh, these zombie monsters. They'll come in. Come in trying to get that. Get that Alan Wake flesh right off the bone. They want to kill you so bad. But one thing that you got. You put the flashlight on them. They're like, oh, God, I can't handle this light. It's too bright hurting my eyes. I'm a monster of the night. Uh, of course, you got your pistol. You know, you pick up other weapons. But yeah, it's all about trying to stay out of the darkness. Stay out of the light. Stay in the light. Look for the light, Kellyanne. Look for the light. So yeah, Alan Wake. Psychological sort of horror game. Uh, very, you know, uh, it's got some uh, good action. You know, you got pulse pounding thrill ride is what it says on the back. Uh, but yeah, great storyline. Really in-depth. Really cool cut scenes, movie scenes in it. I suggest checking it out if you ain't never heard of it. I mean, dang, here we go all the way. You know what it's all about. All right, we're still counting them down, folks. We're still counting them down. We got three out of the way. We're coming in at my second favorite Xbox 360 game of them all. Number two, an all-time classic. Still going to this day, Grand Theft Auto V. Woo! I mean, this has to clearly be in a lot of people's top five games of all time. This thing is even more groundbreaking than the other Grand Theft Autos. They improved on so much in this game compared to the old, the old models. Now, I still love San Andreas. I talked it up on the last episode. But, uh, damn, when 5 came out, it just, it just took over my life, really, for a second while I was trying to beat this thing. The storylines, the ability to switch between three characters, and then just the map, just the world alone is just, oh, dang, where did that disc, whoa, disc, what is happening right now, shit is going crazy, I don't know what just happened, that disc tried to commit suicide, but I saved his goddamn life, you're welcome, disc, shit, but look at this fucking map, god damn, I'm not fucking, old. good god, it's like, I'm driving across the country, oh, Jesus, I can't even, look at it, look at it, look at it, just look at it, Look at that. And then you got the close-up of the downtown area. Good Lord, that thing is gigantic. I mean, there was so much to explore. So many little hidden nooks, crannies, crevices. Bigfoot wandering through the woods. Aliens flying in. You didn't know what you were going to see in the Grand Theft Auto world. This thing is good. I can't say enough about 
Grand Theft Auto 5. But you know what I can say? Something about even more? It's my number one pick on the Xbox 360. This is my favorite game of all time. And I've played a shit ton of it. That's right, baby. Skyrim. Number one. I love this game. I love it. Now, if you're not familiar with the Skyrim world, we're talking about the Elder Scrolls. These things have been going forever. So this game, if you're not familiar with Skyrim, it's like medieval sort of a fantasy, you know, whatever kind of world. Knights and elves and monsters and all kinds of shit. But again, just like Grand Theft Auto, the world in this thing is insane. This is a cool game too, because you could do a flip between the first person or the third person, whichever you were more comfortable with. Personally on Skyrim, I was a third person character guy. I just like to see my, uh, my Viking warrior with his suit of armor and his crazy swords and shit. I wanted to see him in full view, running through the woods, stabbing bears, and you know, chopping off the heads of uh, bandits trying to rob you and shit. Other people, if you're more comfortable with doing the first person, you can be like, whoop, I'm up in this mode now. So that was great with Skyrim, but just, yeah, all of the uh, all of the places that you can explore on this map. I mean, there were so many caves and like dungeons and old dwarven ruins and just everything. And so, yeah, you're up in this northern sort of cold world with a lot of mountains, and a lot of reflections up in this mud today. It's a sunny day in the Murfreesboro Media Headquarters. So yeah, you're like, you know, medieval shit and monsters and dwarves and, and trolls and all kinds of good stuff. Oh, let's break out another map here. Dang, we got another gigantic mother trucking map. I can't even get it unfolded. Good God, here we go. Let's show the people at home. Oh my God, I can barely see it. So yeah. Explore all of this thing. The more you explore, the more little places pop up that you can go uh, check out and go on adventures. Look for goods, look for items, look for weapons. Do all kinds of crazy stuff. All right. Whoa, Skyrim. You're getting back there with your other buddy, the uh, Grand Theft Auto Man. So, here we are again. To the end. But without, whoa, Jesus. Shit's falling out of the case. That was the book. I got discs jumping out. I got books jumping out. I got maps having an orgy in the floor back there. This day has turned crazy. This episode has gone off the rails. Skyrim, check it out. One last note on the Skyrim. Oh, if you've played this game, you know when you're picking locks, you break into a little scene or a little uh, different view of the close-up of the lock, and you got these lock picks, and you're like... Ch -ch 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 and you're trying to turn the lock and stuff and line it all up and everything makes this very distinctive clicking noise. My cat used to go crazy for that thing. He'd be in another room somewhere, chilling, and then I'd get to a point where I gotta unlock a door, gotta sneak in, and it's like, chick, 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 and he'd be like, oh God, jump up on the uh, TV stand, and ah, ah, just trying to get that TV because he'd see those little feet, those little uh, rock picks trying to get in there, and he'd be like chicken out, and then he'd be like, click, 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 and he's like, I can't stand it, oh my God, and I'd have to pause and be like, come on, cat, do your thing, because, I mean, I can't do shit while you just sitting here looking at my lockpick screen, blocking half the damn TV, but man, he loved this game so much, I don't know if it was more love or just frustration, but either way, he was into Skyrim as much as I was. That cat is the best, and he used to chill with me, and he was my Skyrim buddy. So we have reached the end. Another episode of Collector's Corner with Corey Smith is coming to a close. Xbox 360, episode 10, double digits in the books. Video game systems are done. They're out of the way. What are we moving on to next? I don't know. You'll have to stay tuned. You'll have to check it out. Like always, like and subscribe if you dig what you see, and we'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.